CPU overclocking, um, with water cooled CPU or in extreme overclocking, it's pretty easy. You can reach pretty quick the limit of CPU. Memory overclocking is pretty different. If the memory is still on air, you have some limitations. If you will cool it down like we do it usually with like nitrogen, you have some other topics like cold bug on PMIC. So you have to handle the temperatures more compared to the CPU. And this makes overclocking of memory more difficult compared to processors. We design uh, many, uh, many special tool kits, like uh, the memory, special memory heat spreader, just for the liquid nitrogen. And we also make some like heaters to avoid the condensation. 6746. 6748. Okay, wait, wait, wait. 6749. 49. 49. 49. Yeah. Okay. Uh, almost 6748. Alright, how does it feel? Great. Because we was one time more able to show what we can achieve. I hold the great record before, it's around 11,000. Now it's like uh, more than 2,000 higher. It's just, a one, it's just one generation. That's because the Intel's memory controller they have a strong ability to capable to push the, the memory to go higher. Then we take the advantage, right? So, so the CPU, the IMC is very, very good. The silicon is very good. So we, we have to pair the, the resistance in, in impedance so we designed a multiple just to pair the, the very good pro processor. And then we put a, when we find a, the, a better memory, so they can deliver the best the, the overclocking result in, the, in order to smash the war record. For records like that, the process is more complicated. It doesn't only take one person, it's, it's a whole team effort. Starting from our IC sorting guys, to our engineers, to higher up in the management. Basically, I would say it's mostly people's dedication and hard work.